When you're cold caught by a guy in a parking lot, you become unconscious. When you wake up in hospital seven hours later, you are magically conscious again. But what is consciousness? How can it leave and return so easily through some jerk's fist, through alcohol, or through human birth and death? We have no idea, so let's find out what the smart guys and girls think in our list of seven astonishing human consciousness theories. In at number seven, giver or receiver. One of the most fascinating questions posed regarding human consciousness asks whether human brains develop it or they merely receive consciousness from an external source. If it's the former, then that means when our bodies die, consciousness dies. But if it's the latter, as doctor and scientist Robert Lanza believes, then our brains are acting like a satellite dish, receiving signals from somewhere or something in the universe. But before you go thinking we're nothing but empty meat vessels whose minds are being controlled by an alien race from a distant galaxy, just hold up a second. Because as fun as that idea may be for a science fiction novel, there is actually an even more fascinating theory which links into this idea of transmitted consciousness. Number 6. The Universe is Our Baby Despite it being a non-physical concept, the idea of consciousness is now becoming more fundamental to our discussions of the physical world. In our Seven Mysteries of Existence video, we mentioned how physicist Sir Roger Penrose is currently investigating a quantum theory which he believes demonstrates how human consciousness may be transmitted or funneled away by microtubules within human cells. And in our same video, we also covered the idea that our universe may be a simulation. But in the greatest crossover story of all time, it seems these theories may be linked. Because in recent years, more and more physicists are starting to believe that everything in our universe, from stars and stop signs, through to black holes and yogurt, is a mental construction formed entirely from our own consciousness. This means that not only does consciousness not die when your physical body goes kaput, but also that consciousness is responsible for creating actual physical matter. I wish I knew how to tap into that. Make myself a trifle with my mind. Mind trifle. Mmm. In at five. Hey, there's no eye in brain, team. Isn't it great when a group of people come together and work harmoniously on a single goal, whether it's building a bridge, creating a movie, or invading and burning a country to ashes. There's something deeply satisfying about individuals setting aside their own agendas in the name of teamwork. And guess what? There's a theory that our brain does the exact same thing to form consciousness. The single neuron theory states that every one of our brain's individual neurons is, in itself, conscious on some small level, and that each is capable of transmitting and absorbing information. This communication between the neurons helps build the bigger picture of human consciousness. So, when one group of neurons processes the feel of something mushy underneath your foot, another group recalls a memory of this happening before. Then one more group commands you to raise your foot, and the neurons processing sight and smell finally confirm that yes, you have indeed stepped in dog shit. This theory could be used to determine why conditions such as bipolar schizophrenia or other mental illnesses occur. As if several groups of neurons aren't invoking workplace synergy, then your brain's end-of-year review ain't gonna look so good. At 4. It's a side effect of chaos. A recent hypothesis currently being investigated by university teams from Paris and Toronto claims that human consciousness is merely a byproduct of one of the universe's most fundamental principles, entropy. 
Entropy describes how any given system gradually progresses from order to disorder. So when you boil water, its molecules are separated and scattered, increasing its entropy. Similarly, when you cook an egg and scramble it, you've also increased the entropy of the original egg. This means that when you smash your mom's favorite vase, you're actually contributing to the natural progress of the universe. But how does entropy relate to our mind? Well, in an admittedly limited study of nine people, seven of whom had epilepsy, it was discovered that the test subject's neural synchronization displayed higher levels of entropy when they were fully conscious and completely aware, compared to when they were asleep or when the epileptic people were enduring a seizure. This seems to indicate that the greater the chaotic layout of the human mind, the more conscious, the more conscious and in control one becomes. This investigation is fascinating, but its authors wish to remind us that it's still in its very early stages. So if you're looking to achieve a higher state of consciousness, don't go putting your brain into a blender just yet. At number three, consciousness is a movie. When you watch a movie, you're not viewing a fluid depiction of motion, you're actually seeing a series of still images which are projected so fast, you perceive it as one seamless piece of movement. The time slice theory of consciousness believes that our brains work in a similar way, asserting that humans first process incoming sensory information from our eyes, ears, mouth, etc. in an unconscious manner. Then we shift to a state of perceptual awareness. But these moments of awareness only happen in blips or time slices. And it's thought that the whole process lasts around 400 milliseconds. Which may not sound much, but it effectively means your brain has the same thing your Xbox has in the middle of a tough game of FIFA. The dreaded curse of the lag monster. This raises an interesting question though. For if the time slice theory were true, what if we could somehow shorten or remove this lag? What if we could shrink those 400 millisecond gaps between processing and awareness? It could mean the development of hyper-aware human beings. Or it could make the whole world look like a crappy reality show, like what happened when The Hobbit went to 48 frames per second. At 2. It ain't nothing special. The main property of consciousness is deemed to be its ability to integrate all our sensory experiences into one single reality. And the integrated information theory states that this is all consciousness is. A complex system of interactions and evaluations. With this in mind, the theory also states that computer systems which are sufficiently complex could therefore be built to achieve some form of consciousness themselves albeit one which is different to our own human experience. But other researchers who have studied the theory separately claim that the integrated information theory proves we are special little snowflakes after all, and that we could never replicate human consciousness with a computer. Because even with the most powerful processors in the world, there's still no way of mimicking how our brains integrate information into forming consciousness subconsciously. Whereas a computer switch takes in information when it's switched on and does not do so when it is off, humans are known to process information in both a conscious and unconscious manner. And since we don't know which information this applies to or how or why it seems to be essential, it seems the idea of an artificial human consciousness must be consigned to science fiction. For now. And at number one. Is my dog aware? Despite being the most fundamental aspect of our very being, consciousness has rarely been studied within the context of evolution. Because of this, we have no answers to some of the most important questions of how consciousness evolved. Such as when did humans develop consciousness? And do other animals have differing levels of consciousness? The attention schema theory attempts to answer some of these queries by suggesting that consciousness comes as a response to a biological requirement of the brain. As a creature's brain develops over time, it could become gradually overwhelmed with a mass of new data if it failed to develop a sophisticated system for filtering out, processing, and prioritizing certain information. For example, 
When you're driving a car, your brain filters out most of your irrelevant thoughts regarding sexual reproduction, how funny monkeys are, and which kind of ketchup is the best, in order to help you focus on the task at hand. Humans need this selective approach to stimuli, because if we didn't focus like this, we'd become overwhelmed with several thoughts at once, never being able to concentrate on any one thing, and eventually crashing our car into an orphanage. The attention schema theory believes that consciousness is formed out of this ability to shift the spotlight of our mind. And if true, that means that consciousness is indeed an evolved trait found in biological life. So your dumb dog has a form of consciousness, your goldfish, your pet hamster, and maybe even plants and trees too. What this also means is humans today could be experiencing differing levels of consciousness themselves which is something I've witnessed myself shopping Black Friday at Walmart. And even more amazingly, there could be a superior advanced state of consciousness waiting for us in the future, one which our unevolved human minds are yet capable of imagining. So that's our list. I imagine many of you are attempting to experience a higher state of mind right now through various illegal means. But put down your ecstasy pipes and reefer spoons for just a second, won't you? Because we got something important to show you. It's a video of your future if you keep taking all that Viagra and